they want to talk, don't And welcome to Let Them Talk. I'm Paul DiRienzo and my guests Maggie Tobin and George Chang of the Leonard Peltier Defense Offense Committee telling us about uh, some of the recent developments with Leonard Peltier in jail and uh, also an event that's coming up on the Lower East Side this weekend and some other events that are occurring as well. So we're going to talk about those today. So welcome to Let Them Talk. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much for asking us. All right. No problem. Happy to do it. Well, for folks who um, for the last 35 years or so might have been on another planet, who is Leonard Peltier and why do we care that he's in jail right now? Leonard Peltier is Anishinaabe Dakota, a Native American from South Dakota originally. That's where his, his people come from. Uh, he is now 66 years old, but 35 years ago when he was a young man, actually it was a little bit more than that when this happened. It happened in 1975. Mm -hmm. There was a shootout on the Pine Ridge Reservation. But the history leading up to that is quite complex. It has to do with the American Indian Movement, which actually was founded in 1968 in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Mm -hmm. uh, the American Indian Movement was an urban movement mm -hmm. from the very beginning because people moved from the reservation to town. There was nothing for them on the reservation, mm -hmm. no jobs, nothing. They moved into the cities where they got the poorest jobs. There were a lot of problems with alcohol and frequent arrests and terrible mistreatment by the local police. And it started out with patrols by AIM members to kind of look after mm -hmm. those who were arrested to maybe stop them from being sure. arrested. And it grew because there was such a need for it. And eventually it ended up coming back to the reservations mm -hmm because at Pine Ridge in those days there was a very corrupt tribal government mm -hmm. and there was a lot of tension and eventually it led into violence between the t tribal chairman and the more traditional people, people who wouldn't go along with what he wanted mm -hmm. and quite a number of people were killed, people's homes were firebombed, there was drive-by shootings and these traditional people asked AIM to come onto the reservation mm -hmm. to protect them, sure. which is how Leonard ended up there with other, other mm -hmm. AIM members. And this happened in 1975. There was an encampment on the Jumping Bull Ranch, and a, a lot of people were living there mm -hmm. in tents. And the FBI was, of course, very interested in AIM because they didn't like something like this happening. They right. could see it with, it could be right. strengthening the, the feeling, the, the autonomy, autonomy of the native people and they sure. didn't want this sort of thing happening. It was a very strong political movement. It was 1972 obviously there was a whole uprising. In 1972 on. there was the, uh, uh, the, the longest walk, it was to, to uh, right. Washington DC and they took over the BIA headquarters and in 1973, they occupied the little town of Wounded Knee. Right, yeah. It's called Wounded Knee Two, mm -hmm. And the government just brought in troops, right. uh, military. And people were killed. Yes. Yeah, they, Indians were killed who were... Yeah, yeah, two were killed. Right. And, um, of course, nothing, nothing was done about it. But um, in finally, in 1975, the, the situation in Pine Ridge got so bad that they asked AIM to come and the FBI was spending a lot of time around there. Mm -hmm. And one day, June 26th, two FBI agents drove onto the Pine Ridge Reservation. Supposedly they were after a young man who'd stolen a pair of cowboy boots. Well, the FBI, the was, FBI investigating. was investigating the theft of a pair of cowboy boots. Highly unlikely. So they drove onto the ranch. Exactly what happened, nobody is exactly sure but some shooting, mm -hmm. shooting came about. And one young man was killed, Joe Stunts, a native guy. Nobody ever looked into what happened to him, mm -hmm. who was responsible, but two FBI agents were killed. Mm -hmm. Leonard was among four people indicted. Mm -hmm. uh, Jimmy Eagle was one of them. His charges were dropped almost immediately. 
but uh, Leonard and Bob Rubidoux and Dino Butler, mm -hmm. they were all indicted. Leonard escaped to Canada, mm -hmm. which was probably the worst thing that could have happened for him. Right. Bob and Dino were tried separately in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and the jury acquitted them mm -hmm. on grounds of self-defense. And the government really couldn't prove who had fired the shots that actually killed the FBI agents. Mm -hmm. They were shooting on both sides. Sure. So Leonard finally was captured in Canada. It took months. But he was extradited on false affidavits. Mm -hmm. The FBI found a woman named Myrtle Poor Bear, who was a woman with many problems, including alcohol. They threatened her that they would take her children away if she didn't say what they told her to say. Mm -hmm. So she claimed to be Leonard's girlfriend. Sure. In one affidavit, she said she'd even seen the, the shooting. I think there were three or four affidavits, and they decided which one to pick. Each one with a slightly different story. Yeah, a slightly different story, and right. all of them completely false. Mm -hmm. The Canadian government finally allowed him to be extradited. Right. He was tried not in Cedar Rapids, but in South Dakota under a different judge. The FBI had learned their lesson. The mm -hmm. government had learned their lesson. And there was... They a, moved it to a more conservative venue. Much more conservative venue. And they frightened, they tried to frighten the jury. They, they sequestered mm -hmm. them. They said they were... Pe pe well, they tried to do this in Cedar right. Rapids as well. They pulled the whole terrorism trip, you know, yes. what, which they do so well now, but which Absolutely. back then was in the beginning. Yeah. And also, well, the, the judge would not permit a plea of self-defense. Mm -hmm. A judge has a great deal of discretion, mm -hmm. he would like to call it, it's power. Yeah. The judge decides what is admissible and what is inadmissible evidence, and there was a lot of exculpatory evidence, mm -hmm. evidence that might have cleared yeah. Leonard, that was not permitted. Mm -hmm. And the ballistics reports were mm -hmm. just very poor, even though mm -hmm. that was not what was said in the courtroom. Now, Leonard Peltier was sentenced to how long? He was found guilty, unlike the other two who yeah. tried in the other venue, yeah. and he was sentenced to how long? Two life terms. Plus. But wasn't there a minimum on that, 25 to life or something like that? I don't the reason I, I ask know. is that he's been in prison for 35 years, and even, you know, uh, parole is not unheard of even in these kind of cases yes. by this time. I mean, well. It's not like he's 68 years old, he's not running out to lead, relead AIM into the reservation again. Well, that's the whole point. That's why... It's sort of vindictive. It's a vindictive absolutely. Uh, it's, what is it, 30 years and you're out? 30 yeah. years and you're out, usually. Yeah, under the old, I guess, they're under the old uh, statutes, uh, they were, they, they want, he wanted to be, uh, they, he wanted the two life sentences to be consecutive. Uh-huh. Uh, or, not, not consecutive. Um, concurrent. 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 Yeah. Yes. And, um, and what they're, looks like what they're trying to do is to make it consecutive as opposed to concurrent. And, I see. And so, even even under the best uh, case, you know, in the why, why the determination? Because you know, as I said, other people have been released after thirty years for, uh, and 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 where it was, you know, eyewitnesses. Obviously, in this case, there were no true witnesses who ever testified that they saw anything happen like this. So, uh, is is this vindictiveness by the government? Do you well, think? Well, he was he was up for parole uh, last I think two thousand nine two thousand nine so yeah. two years ago and. Uh, and the reason why they denied his parole uh, was that um, they said that he would be a, a threat to uh, to you know to the, the community, but also that uh, it would also lessen uh, the charge of, of the, two, the two murders or, or the two murders that uh, that right. he was alleged of, of, uh, of committing. They want, in other words, they want it to be, you know, you do this, this is what's going to happen. Right. And in this case, we don't know if he did this because Correct. he denies it. And others, there have been, I saw the 60 Minutes program, Mass Men, who said they did it. Well, right. I saw famous, very famous in mm -hmm. 60 Minutes, a man wearing a mask said, I did it, it wasn't Leonard. Right. Um, there was uh, problems, as you said, with the ballistics. Yes. And there was no DNA or any other evidence that linked no. Leonard to Nothing. the death of the two agents. Nothing. Right, and there was numerous people around, and it was uh, it was like the old west, I and mean, people were firing behind will, but hills yeah. and buildings mm -hmm. and trees back exactly. and forth at each other. It could have been anybody. Anybody could have. And in Thunderheart and and in the film, um, the documentary film, I've seen that. Incident at Oglala. Incident at Oglala, right? Mm -hmm. And also the fictionalized version, Thunderheart, which right. tells it in a more fictionalized yes. version, yes. but pretty much the same story. Right. Yeah. It, 
people were coming by left and right. There was like neighbors coming by, people who nobody even knew, and vehicles nobody ever determined yes. who they were, mm -hmm. yeah. who were in the area. Yeah. And and also when you when you read some of the FBI transcripts and things like this, well, they supposedly followed a red pickup onto the onto the Jumping Bull Ranch. But, Le but Leonard didn't have a red pickup, he had a red and white van. Uh -huh. And so he, he, the testimony was so, yeah. it was just absurd. Well, van, he said, pickup, what's the difference? Right. And I assure you, if it was a shoe were on the other foot, the FBI would say, right. was it a van or was it right. a... Yeah. Now, I, I don't even know if this is worth talking, but it got so much media attention at the time, the story of Anime Aquash and where uh, a witness came out of nowhere, the wife of Dennis Banks, one of the yes. leaders of mm -hmm. AIM, mm -hmm. claiming that Leonard Peltier bragged that he shot these agents mm -hmm. and that he was responsible or in some way involved in Anaway May Aquash being assassinated as a alleged informant mm -hmm. for the FBI. Well, that one, well, what happened with that? those allegations? They were so big at one time. I, I well, uh, I don't think that, that I, I suppose that may have harden the hearts of the parole board or something like that. I don't know. But uh, at the moment, I don't think anything is affecting Leonard that deeply. That mm -hmm. way. Uh, of course, she got, what was it, $40,000 from the FBI for moving expenses. She's actually married to an FBI agent. Right. Uh, I've heard that, yes. <laughs> yes. So, right, so I'm letting you say it. So, <laughs> all right, great. So, uh, so, actually, so, so, but it goes both ways. I mean, pro, the defenders have come up with their stories, and in retaliation, the government yeah. has come up with their stories. Yeah. And in the end, nobody's ever, nothing's really come of either, either side. No. And Leonard mm -hmm. just sits there yeah. like Buddha in a 10 foot cell. Yeah. Well, you must remember that it depends on who you are. Mm -hmm. uh, the average stay in prison mm -hmm. for someone convicted of a homicide is eight years. Which means, of course, that half stay longer and half stay less. Sure. But if you look at other cases, people who have been convicted of just plain armed mm -hmm. robbery, sure. they don't get that many years. Right. But if you, if you d permitted, if you committed armed robbery for political reasons, they throw the book at you. Right. We deny we have political prisoners here, mm -hmm. but we do. Right. Tell us a little bit about what's happening coming up. Well. Uh, the committee. Because this is the 26th is coming up. It's the anniversary. Yes. Is, yes. is that why you're having these events? Is it yes. marking that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So they, the 26th is the 30-something yeah. anniversary. Yeah, well, the, the committee I don't likes. I date myself. <laughs> 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 the, the committee likes us to observe a sort of timeline. Like sure. we always like to observe Lena's birthday in September uh -huh. and things like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you mean our event yeah, or so, in general? Yeah. So folks who know about it. Well, yeah. actually, there's two events coming up. Okay. Uh, we are showing, we're, we're part of a group that's sponsoring a film called COINTELPRO 101. That's mm -hmm. this Saturday, sure. June 18th. Okay, and where's that? That's at the Breck Forum. Mm -hmm. What is it? Five, 541 West Street? West Street. Yeah. yeah. Okay, sure. And, and that, film is, uh, that film was produced by the, uh, is it the archive, the... Uh, Freedom Archive. Freedom Archive. Yeah, right. out in California. And that's downtown uh, by the West Bath, uh, yeah. Lower Manhattan on yes. West Street, right down yeah. there, yeah. Yeah. by the yeah. piers yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's going to be from 4 to 6 in the afternoon. On the? On, on Saturday. On Saturday the, the 18th. The 18th, right. okay. Uh, Leonard appears in the film. Oh, really? Yeah. And, and, and Jericho, tell folks what Jericho is all about. That, that's well, an organization. That's, that, that's yeah. more your department. Well, yes. Jericho is, uh, is a is a organization that uh, that their mission statement is primarily to uh, support political prisoners and to, mm -hmm. uh, you know, support them in ways in ways where they to try to get yeah. their freedom, but also uh, in supporting their family members and, and uh, finding ways that um, you know to making to making sure that they, that these freedom fighters don't get forgotten. Okay, freedom fighters, America, land of the free, <laughs> freedom fighters. Why are why are they freedom fighters and not criminals? Well. Freedom fighters, because a lot of people, who, who you know, for instance, uh, Native Americans, they're, uh, you know, they have sovereignty over them. Uh, they have sovereignty w within their own uh, reservations, and particularly in this, in, for in Leonard's case, mm -hmm. um, you know, those FBI agents shouldn't have been in the reservation in the first place. Huh. So, and, and, and there's that case, but also, if you look at um, a lot of the Black Panthers, uh, they, you know, they're 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 trying to. They're trying to find ways in which they can uh, uh, empower themselves and also support uh, and have 
some type of, some type of uh, self determination mm -hmm. over their future and over the way that they can live. Right, and those are people who are in jail for various acts, political acts, uh, you know, which uh, might have uh, brought them in conflict with the system. Absolutely. Uh, supporting things like Puerto Rican independence. Puerto Rican independence. That's one of them. Right. Uh, there, there could be some folks who I don't know if they're considered political prisoners in Cuba, the five Cuban five. Yes. yes. Uh, you know, who they accuse of spying when mm -hmm. really they, they weren't going around blowing planes out of the air like, <laughs> like uh, what's his name, Posada, right? Mm -hmm. He just died recently and you know, nothing ever happened to him for that. Um, I can go through all the cases. Uh, folks who were involved in various uh, struggles in the 1960s, 70s, and 80s sure. when there was plenty of reason to struggle. And Jericho also does a lot of support work around um, um, a lot of Muslim, or a lot of folks who are getting uh, criminalized now for, for their, for their you know, ties or relationships to, uh, in certain terms of supporting like Palestine or yeah. uh, even with um, with uh, what mm -hmm. what is termed eco terrorists. Sure. Uh, you know, gre uh, green uh, green. Um, yeah, yeah. The uh, well, what they're calling uh, animal yeah. liberation or, yeah, or right. liberation All these folks. folks. Are, you know, and we're, we're going to have some folks up on, on the show in, in weeks to come who are supporters of different folks who are doing very long prison terms for basically, you know, where only a little bit of property was damaged. Mm -hmm. It was not as serious, and yet they're hitting them with, like, ridiculous 10, 15, 20-year right. yeah. sentences. I mean, I think and more, children, young people, you know, why would they do that? I mean, well, more and more, they're also uh, crossing over to the border. They're also going towards uh, thought crimes, right? There's, yeah. a, there's a gentleman named uh, um, Daniel uh, 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 McDavid. I forget his first name, but uh, McDavid is, they, they, they sent a, an informant uh, to, to infiltrate his, uh, you know, his, his, his group, and, uh, and this informant was, um, you know, became friendly, uh, and, uh, you know, they started a relationship with right. Eric, for Eric, Eric It's with an old Eric. story. Right, started a relationship with Eric McDavid, and, and was trying to get uh, Eric to do a lot of things that he ordinarily may not have wanted to do. Yes. And, uh, and he was entrapped uh, right. for a thought crime. But the problem with entrapment is you have to admit it to plead entrapment, a very difficult situation to right. be in in front of a jury. So it's like a, the last thing you want to be put into that situation. Sure. But uh, to, to me, what's, you know, it's, it's interesting that po people don't realize that there are political prisoners in the United States. As we talk about political prisoners, whether they be in, uh, in Libya or China or uh, Venezuela or all these different Cuba, but there mm -hmm. are political prisoners here. There's people who fundamentally fell into disfavor with the government because of, the, because of their politics, because of their Absolutely. activism, and things that they even said. And now with the post 9-11 world, we've seen the Patriot Act and things like that closing in mm -hmm. on more and more folks for their beliefs, especially if their beliefs that are aimed to actually doing something, to getting change actually happen, right? right. It's, it's really the, the fact that they might possibly succeed or have a support network that brings the government down on them. Right. I mean, and they, they don't want people to, to to be successful in the sense that they want to make sure they squash, you know, the, the, the most outspoken people or the most pe the people who are, um, you know, who are actually doing the work mm -hmm. of supporting. Uh, I see. You know, supporting the, their own communities or supporting sure. the people that they that that very often are are, are voiceless or who do not have a um, much say in, in how things go. Well, what what should, why should folks out there care? Why should they care? Why should the public care about folks who are in jail because they spoke out about problems in their community or something like that? Well, I mean, I think you can make an argument that um, a lot of Native American, or a lot of Native American, but also a lot of uh, um, African American folks would not have, would not enjoy like the a lot of the freedoms that they have now without mm -hmm. those like, struggles. They're like sitting on the front of a bus, for example. Right. <laughs> right. And then also you look yeah. at um, the, the after school program mm -hmm. that, or um, the breakfast programs that they have in public schools sure. now, that was all started by the, the Black Panther Party. Yeah. Right. And, uh, and then also free clinics, mm -hmm. uh, free health clinics. That's also you know, sure. things that, uh, that the Black Panthers have started, which you know, right. before them, you know, yeah. none of that stuff was available and none of, none right. of it was, was uh, you know, for the public time you see one of those cuts in the sidewalk that lets say go mm -hmm. up and down the sidewalk nowadays without having to be lifted onto the curb, thank the Black Panthers because sure. it was yeah. exactly those kind of changes that happened because of what sure. they did and yeah. he, he claimed that. And that's probably very true. Uh, okay, how about Native Americans? I mean, 
um, we all know we stole the land from them. Yes. You know, and uh, we wrote, we, you know, people might not know that, but we signed hundreds and hundreds of treaties with them, and we pretty much ripped up every one of them yep. as soon as they were signed and did yeah. whatever we felt like. Yeah. Uh, should we feel guilty about that? Come on, you know, it happens. You know, they were, they're a defeated people. It's our country now. I've heard that. Yeah, Many I'm sure times. you have. I'm, I, mean, I know there's people who think that. Well, yeah, how do you say to that? What do you say to that? Well, it's probably the most horrendous genocide in history. And uh, it went on into the 20th century in Central and South America. Mm -hmm. And today, it's more like a cultural genocide. Mm -hmm. uh, a few weeks ago at the Brecht Bre Forum, I went and uh, there was an appearance by Madonna Thunderhawk, mm -hmm. who's from uh, uh, Cheyenne River Reservation. And she said, they are taking the children away from them. Often, the parents do have a problem. So the grandparents want to come forward and say, mm -hmm. I will raise my grandchildren, but the social services say, oh no, they have to go into foster care. Okay. And yes, I've heard these kind of stories. That's, that's, that's what's going on there now. And she mm -hmm. said they, they're really fighting back. Because mm -hmm. the, the traditional way. family structure doesn't get recognized under right. American law. That's exactly it. We don't do things that way. I mean, the, the, in addition to the outright just slaughter, mm -hmm. then there was other examples of cultural genocide with the boarding schools. Sure. And in Pennsylvania, right? Right, not too far from that here. Uh, Carlisle was the best known, yeah. but I, I, well, one mm -hmm. of the things that really affected me very deeply was a visit, a num quite a number of years ago, to Hampton Institute mm -hmm. in Virginia. Uh, my late husband and I knew somebody there, and he said, "I want to show you something," and he took us to the cemetery, mm -hmm. and it was row upon row of headstones, and each stone had a name, age, and Sue at the bottom, like Mary, four Sue. David, six, they were all little children. Mm -hmm. And here they were in swampy Virginia, they had brought them in and mm -hmm. forced them from their homes. Oh, and, and now they're and, buried in land in a whole other climate, a whole other yeah. culture, a whole and, other And, and just being torn from their homes, I mean, yeah. it, it must have been horrendous. In order to raise them as Americans, you know, yeah. or whatever, as yeah. Christian Americans, right. Yeah. Uh, well, where else, uh, maybe we have a few minutes left. Uh, oh, who, is a there, few minutes yes. left, I want to talk about our other event, please. Yes, yes. let's talk about that. That's what I wanted to go to. The following Saturday on June 25th. Right. We're holding it on the 25th because if it rains, then we have a rain date on the 26th. Which is the actual anniversary. Which yes. is the actual anniversary. We're having a barbecue in a community garden in Manhattan mm -hmm. on East 13th Street between Avenues A and B. It's the Diaz y Flores community mm -hmm. garden. So 13th Street between A and B. You can get there on the L train, just get off at First Avenue. Or the uh, 14th Street cross town, get off at uh, Avenue A and just, it's very, mm -hmm. very easy to get yes. to uh, from one to four. Okay. Uh, we'll be serving food. It's a potluck. Mm -hmm. And what's your website? You, it's, uh, you have a Facebook page, right? Facebook. We have, well, we have a website. Okay, your website, yes. Let me, sh uh, this is the headquarters website. I don't know uh, if people gonna, can see I'll it. I'll bring it up closer so <laughs> okay. folks can see it. That's we'll the headquarters website. And if you turn it around, mm -hmm. it's our, our contact information in New York City. And here's the yeah. contact information for folks who can see it on yeah. the TV, yeah. hopefully. Yeah. And, uh, and you can also go to uh, DSC yeah. Flores Garden, their website. Okay. Uh, Diaz it's, it's, Flores Garden. It's a potluck, so if you want to come, bring mm -hmm. food, please. Right. And it's the Leonard Peltier Defense it's Offense, Offense Committee, Committee. LD. It's, ours is the New York City chapter. Right, NYC, LPDOC. You can get it on Facebook, of course, yeah. there as well. Yeah. Now, here's some books where folks want to learn some yes. more. <laughs> I only have a few minutes. I want to give folks an opportunity. Uh, why don't you, George, tell sure. us, uh, George Shank, tell us about this book here. So that's uh, <coughs> Peter Matheson's book um, uh, in the... In the spirit of Crazy Horse, uh -huh. uh, that book was uh, was was met with a lot of um, adversity adversity from the U.S. government. Uh, they were saying that you can't print this. This is all these are all lies. You know, you can't prove any of this. And of course, uh, Peter Matheson, um, you know, went through litigation, uh, numerous litigations uh, over the course of. You could get this book. It was banned for eight years. They yeah. talk about the Pentagon Papers and WikiLeaks. Mm -hmm. This book was banned for eight years. Right. And now it is available, and as you can see, it's a national bestseller. So there you go. And how about this one? Very interesting book. That is, which one is that one? The Trial. I can't see it. The Trial of Leonard. Oh, The Trial oh, of Leonard. Oh, yeah. here. That's also, that also, um, you, Maggie, you want to talk about that one a little bit more? Well, that book is, is an astonishing detail about the trial. 
it, because it was very complex what went on. All right, all and, the issues we just discussed about the trial and yeah, and and, 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 and if, it gives you a very clear picture of what happened, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it's it's well worth reading. Very good. And, and finally, we have prison writings. The prison writings, yeah. Uh, my 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 life is my Sundance. Yeah. So that's an actual that's a that's a book that uh, Leonard penned. Uh, a lot of it is uh, his experiences in prison. Uh, there's a lot. He's also a poet um, and so, a painter. And a painter. Yeah. So I mean, it's just it's a beautifully written book, uh, right. and very touching if you read it. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So those are some books for folks who can uh, learn more about Leonard Peltier, who's uh, at this time probably America's uh, longest imprisoned. Uh, well, he's not the longest, not but quite. one of the longest. One of one the of longest. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. He's among the longest, yeah. and there's others, unfortunately, in competition for that. I'm yeah. sure. Uh, 35 years in prison for uh, events that happened uh, that are more than a little bit shady, to say the least. Um, so, um, got a couple more minutes. Uh, maybe I wanted to delve into who, what is the group that represents Leonard Peltier? There seem to be numerous websites that all claim to be the group well, that supports Leonard Peltier. Well, the committee in Fargo, North Dakota, is actually the official group. That's the official group. That's the official okay. group. And uh, I, I talked to the executive director earlier today just to find out mm -hmm. you know, if there's any late-breaking sure. news and what she wanted us to do. Yes. And the w one way to help Leonard is to call the White House. Okay. Call President Obama mm -hmm. and tell him. Right. There's the White House phone number? There's the White House phone number. Oh, excellent. We have everything here. This is the number. Immediately go to your phone. And you can email the White House, too, by the way, if you go to whitehouse.gov. Uh, and you can email them, it works the same way. Or you can just get on the phone right here, 202-456-1111. You, uh, you can't really ignore that. And you can get your word out to the president that uh, they should do something about pardoning or at Executive least... Executive clemency. Executive that's clemency, yeah. that's yeah. the word. Okay. And here, for folks who might want to write Leonard, who uh, appreciates all the mail he can get, and I know he had a difficult time in jail, didn't he? He was beaten up or something yeah, recently? Yeah. Yeah. Right. And yeah. he's in, uh, this is how you can, you can write to Leonard. Oh, this is where you can write to him. He's in Lewisburg. Right. Only right got a minute. Here, right, before a minute. He was, uh, right before he was going up for parole, uh, they moved him to another facility uh, where he was, uh, he was assaulted. Uh, and then uh, um, due to a lot of uh, support and calls and, and writing in, uh, they, had to, they moved him back to, to Lewisburg. So, All right. That's where he is right now, uh, federal prison you. in Lewisburg. All yeah. right. Thank you very much, Maggie Tobin. Yes. And uh, George Chang. Thank you. Appreciate you coming here for Thank the so Leonard much. Peltier Defense Offense Committee, and we'll be keeping uh, close tabs. And I hope to see folks on 13th Street between Avenue A and B on the 25th of June. And, 1 uh, o'clock. 